the book is not doing anything wrong but it's certainly not doing anything right hello beautiful my name is mina welcome to my channel mina reads and today we are starting my annual reading vlog in which i read four of my most anticipated romance releases of a given year so this year for 2023 my most anticipated releases are going to be love theoretically by ali hazelwood yours truly by abby jimenez Happy Place by Emily Henry and The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. Two of these are authors that I have read from before and two are new to me authors so I'm excited to share this reading experience with you guys. So stay tuned to see my thoughts and opinions and feelings on all these books. Okay friends, before we get into the vlog, I, I did just want to say a huge shout out to Lit Me. They ended up sending me this really awesome desk lamp that I could share with you guys. And so there is going to be a link and a discount code in the description below. But let me tell you a little bit more about them. So Lit Me, they have this really awesome desk light. It's called the Ambilight Desk Lamp. And it is a really customizable light for your desk. I also think it would work pretty well on like a nightstand. for the kind of girl that likes to read in bed. But I have been using it at my desk while I'm doing homework and it has been like such a lifesaver for me and so let me what I really like about this particular desk lamp is that it is super customizable in that you can adjust the brightness you can adjust the temperature of the light you can also um kind of move it around you can move the body of the lamp around as well as moving like the arm and the spotlight on it super helpful for me while i'm reading and you can adjust not only like the spotlights and like what the headlight looks like but you can also adjust the body and it's like really cute so you can do these different modes some of the modes they're like polychromatic and it just switches through like different color cycles which is really cute and really pretty i like the way that it looks so thank you so much to lit me for sending this over the link will be in the description below it was a little discount code for you to use but i'm super happy with it and i would definitely recommend it if anyone's in the market for a new desk light so okay hi friends so i'm a little bit sick my voice is weird when am i not sick that's a better question when am i not sick i feel like every time i film a vlog i'm sick at some point but uh anyway that's not what we're here to talk about what we are here to talk about is the nanny by lana ferguson i just started this last night before i went to bed and i'm already 30 percent into it so i had to stop myself from reading so that i could finally give you an update on it um so like i said i'm 30 percent through so it's about this girl named cassie cassie is a grad student paying her way through school and uh she formerly was a cam girl on only fans now she is working more traditional jobs she answers like a help wanted ad for a live-in nanny um and she does an interview in this uh live-in nanny position with this hot single dad who's a chef and he's really busy all the time he's a total workaholic and he is struggling to take care of his young nine-year-old daughter uh, as a single parent so that's where Casey kind of comes in. She's this living nanny and her and the dad sort of have some tension. And we find out that her and the dad, his name is Aiden. So we find out that her and Aiden used to have like a relationship through OnlyFans kind of. He was one of her like highest paying customers. They used to do like solo shows together and stuff like that. And she caught feelings for him. And he caught feelings for her but something happened that um kind of terminated their relationship and also their relationship was like entirely anonymous but at the part where i'm at she has recently figured out that he that aiden is the guy from only fans that she used to talk to and so now she's having feelings about it what do i think so far i really am liking the premise i really like casey's relationship um with the young daughter and like her taking care of her uh is like very sweet and wholesome and it's making me feel really good and then i think her and aiden their dynamic is interesting they're very awkward together like they're just always awkward there's always like this strange tension in all of their interactions so i don't know if i'm like 100 percent shipping them or anything yet but their scenes are just so awkward in a way that i almost find very refreshing because i feel like in most romance novels the guy is almost always like very cool calm and collected and like super suave and i feel like the fact that aiden doesn't have that and he's like really awkward and stilted and he never knows what to do with himself i kind of like that that's kind of cute so that's where i'm at so far we'll see how things shape up but like i mean so far i'm pretty pleased with it my voice may sound like death but i am living and loving the nanny right now 
I am currently 60% through. Let me double check. I might be like 63% or some odd number. Yeah, like 62%. 62% of the way through the nanny. Loving it so much. So where we left off, I was talking about how... Um, how Aiden and Cassie they have like a really awkward dynamic and a lot of that awkwardness is fueled by the fact that they are like extremely attracted to each other but they're just in a weird situation it's like he's her boss and she's taking care of his kid and it's just like it's just weird so sometimes they'll be having conversation they'll be having banter and then it'll veer into like inappropriate territory which makes their conversation be like awkward and stilted because they're trying not to cross boundaries but where I'm at some boundaries have been crossed and they're getting freak nasty and I was not expecting it to be as explicit as it is since this is like traditionally published but it's explicit and the talk is dirty and I was shook and I was shaken and Mr. Aiden Reed I love him I'm obsessed with him I need him I want him I I'm weak in the knees over him okay like I really like him I really like the the kind of shy hesitant thing he has going on but then he's like super confident and that's in the bedroom excellence that's what I like to see okay I'm I'm having a ball with that okay I'm also still very much loving the relationship between Cassie and the daughter Sophie just like the you know the rapport that she's building with the little girl and the way that she's helping the little girl like open up and there was this really sweet scene where we we're finding out that Sophie's like she's starting at a new school and so she's having some trouble making friends and she's also still grieving the loss of her mother who passed away about a year ago and that's why she like lives full time with Aiden and why he's a single parent and everything like that. Um, and so just like seeing Cassie be there for Sophie while she's grieving her mother and trying to like comfort her and make her feel a little bit better and be like close with her emotionally in that way. It's just so cute and so wholesome, but then like Aiden and Cassie have their situation going on, which is very fun. And it's also a bit angsty because, like I mentioned earlier, he used to be a client of hers and he used to be like privately corresponding through OnlyFans and like they had a whole thing going on and they were supposed to meet up and then he flaked on her and she's like, oh, like, boohoo, he's deserted me once, so I'm scared to tell him that it's me and to like let him know that I'm the girl from OnlyFans, but she's like, I love Cassie, really love her, but she's dumber than a box of rocks because why has she not yet realized that the reason that he ghosted her exactly a year ago is because the baby mom died. Like, put two and two together, sister. This is basic math. Like, let's, come on, mama, let's think. Other than that, I'm loving it. I really like Cassie. I really like Aiden. I love the daughter Sophie. And I feel like she's a well-written character. A lot of times when there's a child in a romance novel, the child is always written in the goofiest way possible. They don't feel like a real person. But Sophie feels like a real character and I really care about her. And I'm very invested in her as a character in the story, which is very important to me if I'm reading like a single dad romance. So it's just giving. It's giving on all the levels that I needed to. And I'm having a ball. I kind of want to finish it tonight because... I'm a little bit in love with this couple and I have to know how their drama is going to play out. So I finished The Nanny. I think I'm going to give it four stars. I really liked it, you guys. I really liked it. For me, the third act of a romance book can really make or break it for me because I need the conflict to kind of make some sense. And whether the conflict is like reasonable, logical, whatever, it's, it's always going to be up for debate. But I... I really need the resolution of the conflict to be good, to be convincing, to be compelling. And I feel like the way that the conflict was resolved in this was really good. And the way that the side characters are written in this book is just so incredible. And the way that they're used in the book really worked for me. And I personally would recommend it. I think that it was sweet, it was fun, and it just, it gave me all the things that I really was kind of wanting from it for the most part. So, let's move into our next read. I have finally read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez and I have thoughts. I have so many thoughts. This book, Yours Truly, is about our two characters, um, Brianna and Jacob. They're both um, doctors in the ER at this hospital and Jacob is a newly hired doctor and Brianna kind of immediately has some beef towards him because she thinks that he is trying to replace her for this um, promotion that she wants to get. And also, Jacob just has like a really bad first day. Like he has a really bad run of patients where all of his patients like die on his first day. And it's just like, 
like really really bad so when they end up meeting um there's like a lot of tension and awkwardness and they have this really bad first meeting everything goes horribly and part of this is due to the fact that Jacob has some severe social anxiety and so he really struggles to communicate with like new people especially if he's in a new and like stressful situation and I think having your first day all your patients died like pretty fucking stressful okay so him and Rihanna they get off on the wrong foot and Jacob decides that instead of trying to like communicate with her to um you know apologize verbally he's going to write her a letter so they end up exchanging like letters and notes to one another and that's how they you know get to know each other get close and sort of bond and this i was swooning i was giggling i was kicking my feet turning the pages i read this whole book in one sitting i was doing my hair yesterday and i just listened to the audiobook the whole time that i was doing my hair so i ended up finishing it and i can't give you like incremental updates on how i was feeling but like that first hundred pages was just so incredible to me i thought that the author did a really good job with setting up the characters um brianna and jacob are very relatable very lovable people um i really enjoyed the hospital setting i felt like we got a lot more of the hospital setting in the beginning and like the dynamics between them and the nurses and like the hospital politics and stuff like that i thought all that was really cool and really fun so one of the things that's um, also going on in this story is that Rihanna, she has this younger brother who's like 27 and he's in renal failure and so um, he is like on the transplant list but it's not looking good for him to get a donor and Jacob being like the kind benevolent angel that he is he in secret decides to like get the test done to see if he could be a donor for Jacob for the brother Ben because I don't know he's just mother Teresa, and so there's like all of this wonderful good heartwarming stuff happening in the beginning of the book and then we get into this other part of the plot which is that jacob has recently come out of a long-term relationship his ex-girlfriend is now getting married to his brother which is so crazy and so shysty but things happen i guess so jacob is trying to prove to his family that he is okay with this turn in events and that he's over his ex and so he asked brianna if she could like fake date him for this upcoming wedding stuff that they have so like if she can come with him to the engagement party and those kinds of things so they end up doing this like fake dating thing and once the fake dating plot like really kicks into gear i have to say that the book loses a little bit of its luster for me because but as the fake dating plot goes on i feel like their thought patterns get really cyclical and it got to a point of i was actually like tired of them and they were irritating me so badly because there was a constant miscommunications between them and i feel like i went from having that like you know i'm giggling i'm twirling my hair i'm falling in love i'm swooning over the characters and over their relationship to just like severe irritation because i feel like the the portion of time where they're just like going back and forth in their mind about the relationship and where it's going and if it's real and if it's fake it like lasts for so long and it drags out forever and ever and ever and then things finally come to a head um and they like finally communicate they finally figure it out and then they have like a brief moment of happiness that we don't even get to see it happens completely off page like where they're happy and openly communicating and understanding each other we don't get to see any of that we get like a brief paragraph like two sentences where it's like oh and we were so happy for five months and then we're immediately thrown into a new out of the fucking blue conflict with like 30 pages left in the book spare me spare me the bullshit i just like what are we doing i just i'm so frustrated with this because i was loving this book i genuinely feel like it was so funny and genuine and tender and loving and heartwarming and everything it just was so good and i just feel like for me personally the fake dating aspect just kind of destroyed it and i'm so mad like this is still a 3.5 star i would still heavily recommend this to other people but i think that my irritation with it is coming from the fact that when i started it i felt like this is the best book i've ever read i'm 100 percent giving this five stars new favorite author like really really strong positive feelings in the beginning and it just sort of slowly but surely like my my interest my excitement my investment just lowered and lowered and lowered to the point of like i finished the book irritated and it's like 
you know, I'm reading their epilogue and I don't really care about where their relationship's ending up. And I hate that. I, I really hate that for me. Um, okay, we're working from a mildly different angle. I have started love theoretically and I also have my coffee. So I have made it about 50 pages in and friends, I'm a little bit obsessed. It is about this physicist named, named Elsie. And so Elsie, she is currently working as an adjunct at a few different universities and she is very stressed out, very unsatisfied with her job and also severely underpaid and unable to um, like adequately pay for all of her healthcare needs because she doesn't qualify for insurance because it's like she's going through a lot. And so we start the story out with Elsie trying to get in trying to get this like new job at MIT where she would be working like as a researcher. She also works for this um, company that does like fake girlfriend work I guess. So she works as this guy named Greg's fake girlfriend and she goes to like a family event with him. She meets his older brother Jack and her and Jack have a sort of charged interaction and then come to find out jack is one of the people that is on this team for like the interviewing process it's like i really am liking it because i feel like it sets up the stakes of the story really well because i'm like i'm thoroughly invested in her getting this job because i know that she needs it i know my girl is so dissatisfied with her job and i know that my sister really needs this health care benefits and all that so i'm 110 percent invested in her getting this job which is good. I really like Elsie's voice as a narrator a lot more than I liked B from Love on the Brain, which is the last Ali Hazelwood book I read. I hated B. She irritated the shit out of me. It was just the worst. Okay, it was so bad. But this, I'm having fun. I. All right, hi my friends. So I'm outside on my newly built deck. Um, maybe I'll show you what my backyard looks like a little bit. But yeah, we just got this like deck built and we just got this fence put in. Um, but I'm also reading Love Theoretically and I'm on page 196. It's very obvious that he has feelings for her, but she's a little bit oblivious like all Ali Hazelwood protagonists are. But I'm loving this so much. And the point where I'm at right now, we've seen a lot of progress being made. And so um, something happens where Greg is like he has kind of an accident and he has to get an emergency surgery and so he's like super out of it and loopy and um she ends up having to take him to his apartment and jack comes with her to do that and her and jack kind of get to talk and continue bonding and they've been bonding and getting to know each other throughout this whole interview process that she's doing but um at greg's house while they're taking care of him it kind of just like you know all like the walls come down between them and they're just getting closer and closer and i just love it so much but i just got to this page that's so funny so they're kind of i want to say that they're kind of dating like they're they're um asleep at jack's house at this point because some stuff has happened i've i skipped over some of the development of the plot but some stuff has happened they're kind of dating and they are at jack's house and she ended up sleeping over and so he's telling her about how much he just really likes her and he said that he has like all these fantasies about her and so she is assuming that they're like sexual but he says that his fantasy is like that he wants to take care of her and he was like you know like he says and when I really let go, I imagine that you let me take care of you. And she says, why? And he said, because in my head, no one's done it before. And I don't know why, but that got me. Like, it's kind of cheesy, but I love it so much. Like, he's so sweet and adorable. And I'm just, I'm just so happy reading about them. I think that the story is really fun. It's really entertaining. It's a little goofy, a little outlandish, but also at the same time, it's just great and really fun. And it feels grounded in terms of like the, the stakes because, you know, Elsie is really trying to get this job and it's it's interesting um but it doesn't feel like too ridiculous i felt like for me personally uh love on the brain it just felt a little ridiculous and a little goofy and irritating um just because of the way that like the plot was developing and being in b's mind was so frustrating to me but i love elsie i'm really liking jonathan um and one of the things that her and jonathan slash jack are like 
really talking about a lot in the development of their relationship is that Elsie is an extreme people pleaser and she doesn't really show her true self to a lot of people but Jack just kind of brings out this really authentic side of her and I don't know it's just it's just very sweet and fun and rewarding and I'm having a really good time so I'm about halfway through the book so far and I will let you know how things end up but I'm having such a good time it's yeah this is really Ellie Hazelwood's best work to me like I I'm gonna let you know how I feel when I finally finish it but I've only got like I want to say like 40 or 50 pages left but I'm obsessed like it's so good it's so good like am I an Ellie Hazelwood stand now I don't know but besties I finished this book this is definitely Ali Hazelwood's best work I'm I'm debating if this is like a 4 or 4.5 star for me because I enjoyed this so much. Y'all know I, I am a very critical reader so I do have some critiques to make of the book but I didn't like obsess over the tiny details that maybe bugged me a little bit like I would in other reading experiences such as like Yours Truly because I think that Yours Truly was really good. It had characters I really liked. It was a sweet romance and I absolutely am in love with Jacob from Yours Truly but I just couldn't get over those little things that kind of nagged at me but in this like I just was able to be fully submerged in the reading experience Experience and just feeling like the love and the connection between these characters and just having fun like okay so I am gonna put forward one critique that I had which is that um, Jack really feels like he understands Elsie maybe more than Elsie understands herself which I don't love and Elsie is kind of like this people pleaser and so Jack really know knows that and understands that about her and kind of worries to some degree because she does uh, people please to the point of like self-sabotaging um, and she never puts her own needs and wants like at the forefront she's always more focused on other people's comfort and pleasure and happiness um, so Jack does kind of have some worries that she will replicate those behaviors in their relationship and he doesn't want that um, so in worrying about that which is super valid he sometimes is a little bit patronizing where he's like I know the real you you don't have to hide from me you can you know you can be yourself and he just is kind of like he can be a little bit annoying a little bit overbearing with that and so I was a little bit irritated with that I felt like it was mildly patronizing but then Elsie kind of confronted that herself like she actively says to him like this is a little bit patronizing I don't need you to tell me like how to behave I know my own mind I you know what I'm saying and so I really appreciated that because I felt like it was something that was going to go uncritiqued and it was going to be like you know the story was going to try to make it seem like he knows her better than she knows herself or he can like make unilateral decisions about their relationship for her you know because that was something that it kind of felt like it was maybe veering into that territory so I'm very happy that it didn't yeah so even that one thing that I had a little bit of concern over it was like resolved and uh i just i just like them i just like them so much and ultimately i love this love confession um because they're like having this conversation and jack says like i want you lc all the time i think of you all the time i want to be with you on you every second of every day i think i dream of crazy things i want you to marry me tomorrow so you can go on my health insurance i want to lock you in a room for a couple of weeks i want to buy groceries based on what you like i want to play cool like i'm attracted to you and not obsessed out of my mind but that's not where i'm at not at all i need you to keep us in check i need you to pace us because wherever it is we're going i'm here i'm already here like I love how obsessed Jack is with her I love how obsessed he is his love confession is a little bit a little bit unhinged him saying I want to lock you in a room for a few weeks is crazy but I did swoon I love when a love confession is a little bit outlandish hyperbolic and maybe even a little bit obsessive and scary it does it for me every single time. To me, this is a perfected version of the formula that she does in all her books because all of her books are kind of similar in like plot setup and character archetypes and everything like that. But I feel like this is the best one and she really perfected the formula. So I think that if you would want to give Ali Hazelwood a try, I would say read this one instead of starting with like the love hypothesis or love on the brain and if you enjoy this one maybe you could go back and read the others but I think that this is like like I said she perfected the secret sauce with this one I'm now going to be starting um happy place I am not sure what I'm doing right here right now but um I am currently reading happy place and I'm about 
10 maybe 12 percent into the book and happy place is about our two protagonists whose name I immediately forgot. I know the guy's name is Wynn and her name is Harriet. So we're, we have these two protagonists, Wynn and Harriet, but it is told entirely from Harriet's point of view. And it is about them. They used to be fiancés. They broke up about, I want to say a year ago, but maybe it's only been a few months. I, I'm unsure. I've already forgotten, which is maybe not a great sign. Um, and it is about them and they are going on this annual a uh, friend vacation with their um, core friend group from college and they haven't told anybody that they have broken up yet and pretty much they end up finding out that this is going to be their very last time ever taking this group vacation in this like lake house that they've been going to for the past eight or nine years um, and it has a lot of sentimental value to them and it's going to be the last time that they're able to do that together and also their friends announce that they are getting engaged and they're going to get married at the end of this week-long trip at the lake house so when and harriet decide to spare their friends and not you know like take the shine away from them um so they decide not to tell anybody that they're broken up and so they have to pretend that they're still together for the duration of this trip uh, the story is broken up into two timelines where we get to see um one timeline which is called the happy place which is in the past when they were like in their getting together period and then the reality and the reality is the current um day where they're at this lake house so it's interesting so far and i don't have too much more to say about it but i did just want to check in and let you know that i have started it and yeah so I'm about 32% into the bad place uh I mean happy place but it is pretty much the bad place because I hate it here I am so bored I just it's uh listen the book is not doing anything wrong but it's certainly not doing anything right I am so unbelievably bored and my overwhelming feeling right now is just a complete lack of interest and like total apathy towards the story I just feel nothing like it's possible unlikely but possible that things will change as the story goes on but I just feel like I I don't care like I'm this is actually pretty crazy okay I I think that Emily Henry is a very talented author okay so I don't think that the writing is bad necessarily just like in a general sense on a prose level the dialogue's fine there's like some witty jokes in it I guess but it's just it's not fun it's not interesting I really do not care about this friend group I do not care about their relationship dynamics I just feel like the dual timeline thing is not working for me and in general like I just I really don't feel chemistry between Wynn and Harriet I really am not interested in Harriet as a protagonist like she just feels very bland to me very one note I feel that Wynn is kind of the same it's you know like the girls say that Emily Henry really served but I'm not eating it like it's just not just not good to me I don't know Alrighty, my dudes. So pretty much I DNF'd Happy Place. I DNF'd it. I chose myself. I chose peace. I chose love. And I just was not having fun with that book. I'm not going to say it's a bad book. I think that Emily Henry is a really good writer, but I think that she is just not my kind of writer. And she doesn't write the kind of romance that truly resonates with me on a consistent basis because I did really love People We Meet on Vacation. I cannot lie to you. I adored that book. I devoured that book, read it in one sitting. It was incredible. I also found like book lovers to be pretty emotionally effective in a few areas but that's also not my favorite romance uh beach read was not my favorite romance by any stretch of the imagination i really hated beach read and this one i i'm i only got about 50 percent, so i'm not going to blatantly say that i hated it or that it's terrible or whatever but i just found myself just genuinely not caring i, I didn't care i wasn't interested i wasn't invested i don't care why they broke up i don't care how they're going to get back together i don't give a fuck about their friends i don't give a fuck about the lake house like it's just it's doing nothing for me and so i feel like in an instance like that why would i waste my time continuing to read the book so am i going to say that you shouldn't read happy place am i going to say that you're wrong if you loved happy place if happy place is your favorite emily henry book if like no of course not but i did not enjoy it so i feel like i value my time enough and i know myself enough that i know the reading experience is not going to get better for me and i'm not going to magically start caring and love the book so I'm I chose myself I chose to free myself from that particular experience and with that said this is the end of the video so um quite shockingly my favorite book of all of them was Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood I 
enjoyed the love hypothesis but i really hated love on the brain so i'm shocked beyond all belief that this was my favorite of the video but that is the end of this year's installment of reading my most anticipated romances so let me know what romances you read this year in 2023 and how have they been what was your most anticipated read did it live up to the hype for you let me know in the comments below also let me know whatever thoughts you may have about the books that i ended up reading in this video because i love reading your comments i love engaging with you guys so please do share your thoughts and also leave me a pink heart emoji and i will see you all in my next video hopefully Bye, babies. Mwah.